Well, I'm going to make sure we got enough goop. Gasket maker, they call it. You're watching Makeshift Garage. You're watching Makeshift Garage. You're watching Makeshift Garage. Most of these are aluminum. All the four, 390s, all the, they're all aluminum. This is steel because a motor mount goes on the bottom of the front of the motor, which holds it in the fire truck. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's what I got to say. That's why you group it good, just in case you miss a little. There's plenty on there. This has been the entire build. I cannot go forward because there's always a piece that's not here. It's always back ordered or, it's, or it can't be found. We even had a water pump, but it was the wrong water pump. We sent it back. Then they got another one, sent it back. Now we got another one coming. It better be the right one. Or I got to use the old one. I'm sure there's a number of techniques for this. This is what I got. Make your own tools. A little assembly lube on there. Make sure she's slipping on nice. You can never over lube any of this stuff. It's always best to lube it all up. And don't worry about it. What's that? See, in the FEs, you have a small piece of steel that you slide in there and then you can center the the case which is aluminum this one's steel and you don't have that short snub to put in there uh, I think even a 460 has that it's like a short snub of steel that you slide in and you center everything and then you slide everything in front of that this don't have that you're using the snub off of this so you want to make sure you got the same gaps which I do at the moment That's the motor mount. Sits and bolts on, one bolt, bam. The whole motor. Back of it gets held on by the tranny mounts, which is amazing, but that's the ticket. And that's where she sits, right there. The only ones that go into water jackets are these two. They gotta be gooped. Um, 12 to 15 foot-pounds on the cover, on the timing chain cover, but that's for the aluminum one. This is steel, 391, heavy duty, industrial engine. They were only used in industrial applications. On this particular engine, they have a fuel pump bracket cover because it doesn't have a fuel pump, mechanical fuel pump in the side of the engine. It has one, I think in the tank or on the firewall, along the frame probably. All pumps in, all pump drive, all pump pick up, everything's torqued down, pans on, painted, torqued down, turn it over. Let's do the top. Well, it's another beautiful, sunny, breezy day on Long Island. I'm glad that hot, hot weather is gone. This is, you know, if we add up total time, you know, this is probably like day seven or so on the fire truck. We've never been able to just put eight hours a day, except for when we were pulling it. We got like six hour days, pulling the engine out and stuff like that. We've had such a hard time with parts, but we did learn a lot about the 391, which we didn't know. So the 391 is definitely a specialty engine. And you know what? They don't use them anymore, so parts are very hard to get. You should see like you should see some of the boxes that the new old stock came in. The boxes look like they've been throwing them around them on the shelf for like 50 years. And finally, we bought it. Inside, it's a brand new oil pump. But on the outside, it looked like a beat up box, you know? We're here, we're gonna get this together now. We're gonna wrap this motor up, man. We're gonna slap in the freaking heads. We're gonna do the lifters. We're gonna do the push rods. We're gonna do this, intake, everything. Get, oh, the carburetor's over there, so we'll wash it out real quick when we get there and we'll throw that on. But we gotta get this motor ready to go in. Today's the day. All right, so these heads are beautiful. He did a great job, Merkel did. Hey, there we go. Head gaskets installed, heads are next. Let's get this top end buttoned up, man. Woo! And these are heavy, yes, if you wanted to build a hot rod, you should probably, probably go aluminum. But if you're on a budget build, which I always am, uh, 
I'm gonna redo my heads. I got uh, some 460 heads right there on the shelf. And those 460 heads, uh, I'm gonna try my hand at porting, polishing, you know, making them the best heads I can make them. And I'm gonna see what kind of horsepower I can get out of them. Dip them in oil and longer ones go where the longest is you definitely wanna dip them in oil. I mean, I'm sure there's guys out there that have a million different ways and things to use, but that's the way my pops taught me, that's the way I do it. As long as the threads go in nicely. All right, so we're gonna do the pattern like they say, that you always should do the pattern, start in the middle, work your way out, 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 out. And it's 80 to 90, we're gonna go with 90. And we're also using the old bolt, so we're just going with 90. And also, we, um, we're gonna do it in 45 first, then 90. So we're going 45 in the middles, and then work our way out. Okay, now we'll go 90. Now we don't know how many times this motor has been rebuilt, how many times these bolts have been used. The old days they had stretch bolts, some of them weren't stretch bolts. I can't get involved in that. If we break a bolt, we take the damn thing back apart and pull the bolt out and buy new bolts. But I don't think we will. I think it'll be fine. Oh, hold on, let me get this one. Now, we definitely don't want to break a bolt, but it could happen. Did it. No broken bolts. Alrighty. One down, one to go. And there we have it. Get one started. I'm always nervous the head, the thing could flop and the head could fall off. You don't want that ever to happen. Now we're good. Want everything clean, nice. You don't have any obstructions when you're talking. You get a true reading. Just bring them all down to their stop, then go back, talk the middles out like before, and do them in increments. I go half and half, it's fine. Do 45, 90. Check them again. 